Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Hello, everybody. Love to see you here again today on the Dare to Leap podcast. And I am so lucky today. I have a Dan Weiss here with me. Dan has a unique relationship to me. Hmm. Do you want to guess what it is? <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you. It is that he and I both have offices in a shared workspace in the tiny town of Farmington, Missouri. Um, you probably never heard of it, but it is about an hour and a half south of St. Louis, Missouri. So Dan, I asked him if I could interview him because you might see like behind him, he's got quite a lot of stuff going on. And Dan has been working virtually as an employee, as a contractor, he has worked with VAs. He's got quite a wide variety of knowledge and experience in this arena. So that's why I asked to interview Dan. So Dan, tell us a little bit more about you and what you do now. Well, I am an IT consultant, as you mentioned, and I've been this on and off for 30 years. And as technology has improved, the job has become more and more virtual. Uh, during my 11 years with IBM, I never actually had an office in any location, I was constantly at client locations and everything we did was virtual there. Sometimes my team was even virtual across the country or even across the world. And uh, certainly all the internal functions like HR and all that kind of stuff was all virtual as well. So I've been working in a virtual world for a long time. Now, as you mentioned, we're about an hour and a half south of St. Louis, which is the big city in the area. And uh, my employer saw early on that me driving an hour and a half each direction really didn't serve a purpose. So hence, I'm in the shared space that you discussed uh, down here in beautiful Farmington, which is only about 10 minutes from my home. So a much better commute. That is a much better commute. Um, as the listeners know, I live an hour from here. I live in a town called Black. But this is where I come to do my grocery shopping, have lunch with girlfriends and things like that. So that's why when I saw shared workspace here, I jumped on it. And Dan, you're the one that's here the majority of the time. So yes. you, you work in this shared space, basically full time. And are you an employee at this point? Uh, well, I'm an employee of the contracting company that I work for. And then in turn, I get contracted out to other contracting companies and sometimes there's even a couple more generations in there where I have clients that have clients and so on. Um, in this particular case, um, I was going to say something really insightful and I missed it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I, I, you're, you're younger than I am and I have those moments all the time. So. Um, oh gosh, I can't remember what it was. Anyway, no, so I have uh, clients of clients and uh, I work virtually for them. And the nice thing about it is they can be anywhere and um, my service is at the same high level. So one of my clients is in Chesterfield. One of my clients is in Alton, uh, which is uh, a small picturesque town just over into Illinois with its antique shops and whatnot. Um, and in turn, another client is in St. Louis. And I've also had a client that was in Florida. And the end result of that is I get to stay here. Whereas with IBM, I was what they called a road warrior, where you would get on a plane every week and, and fly around. And certainly in today's COVID-19 world, that's just flat out impractical, if not impossible. So um, this is something I've used. Now I remember what I was going to say. You mentioned the fact that I'm in the shared space the most amount of time. That's actually one of the things I like about this shared space is a lot of people are working from home, as they say. And uh, for discipline reasons and also for a sense of the days going by because it gets a little timeless at this time. Uh, I enjoy the fact that I get up, I leave the house and I actually come to a workspace and this is my workspace and you can see the 3D printer in the back printing something related to one of my projects and uh, most of the stuff is virtual in the computer space. But I have to get up, I have to get dressed, 
Uh, I don't go to work in my pajamas. Um, and that's important for me is to have that. Whereas at IBM, sometimes I did work from home and um, I personally like the differentiation of going from one location to another. So. Yeah, and um, so not only do you sound like you feel more productive when you go to the shared workspace, um, and you like getting out of your pajamas, but you don't have to get dressed up, right? I mean, you can still wear. No, I'm only fashionable from the waist up right now. <laughs> and you guys, I know, cause I, you know, I've, I've seen him today <laughs> and, and he gets to see me when I come in here in anything from pajamas. Do you, did you see me? I think you did see me the time I came in, in my yeah, pajamas this winter. Yeah. 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 And, and whatever version of a tiara I have on that day. So Dan has actually seen me um in more like full uh, attire of pajamas than anyone other than my husband <laughs> but this uh the, the virtualness well i'm not even sure that's a word um works very well in this because i'm connected on only by zoom meetings which a lot of people are but from back in my time in in ibm in the early 2000s when messaging apps first became part of it we were actively using those to not only stay connected, which is important in a virtual organization, but to leverage the combined knowledge of ourselves. So a common tactic we used in meetings is we'd have our laptops connected to the internet and we'd have the instant messenger going on and maybe you're presenting or you're in a meeting and the customer asks you a question you don't know the answer to, but you know a member of your team does, you're a virtual assistant in that case, then you would type a quick message to them and they'd come back with an answer and you'd seem just that much more knowledgeable. Uh, this kind of backfired me one time in the middle of a presentation. I had my back to the screen looking at my audience and somebody said, something cool just happened. I'm like, huh? He goes, yeah, down at the bottom of the screen. Well, at this point, this version of MSN Messenger, which is a while ago, but it's the one person sign on name was Cool Venkat Swami. And that had popped up to say he had come online. And then I talked a little bit about our group mind and, and actually made the client happy to know that you not only are they getting me in any given situation, but they're getting the larger organization. And that's where the virtual nature of this really helps. Um, I had a case today where I was having some computer issues with a computer in another physical location. I virtually contacted the person. They said, OK, I'll go over and reboot your machine. And that solved my problem. And it's nice to know that you have those people wherever they might be around the world. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Dan, how has COVID impacted your, your job, your business? Has it impacted it at all? And if so, how? Well, it hasn't impacted my ability to do my business, thankfully, because um, I work with things that live in the digital world, so they're very easy to move back and forth. Now, I'm also doing some practical things like the 3D printing, and those I have to physically mail at, or UPS or FedEx or whatever, and they uh, tend not to get where they're going very quickly anymore. Yeah. So there's a little bit more of an impact, but from the virtual standpoint, it hasn't. And as people are working in home locations, it's not changed anything for me because I was already remote. They're remote too, but they're just remote in a different location. Um, Business-wise, everything is slowing down. The jobs report or the GDP report showed that. Um, I saw but, that come out today. That was pretty yeah. shocking, wasn't it? Yeah, but I also had some projects that were already in motion, already budgeted and whatnot, so they continue mm -hmm. to uh, go along. And in fact, one of them deals with the agriculture industry and people still got to plant corn. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I also feel like there, while there are areas that are slowing down, just like you said with agriculture, that still has to keep going. Do you think that there are other areas that could be increasing their need for people like you? People like me in terms of IT. Um, IT, virtual, anything, whatever right. you want to comment on. Um, companies are exploring virtual workers in a way that they never have before. Um, my niece is a international marketing person for a company in the Atlanta area. And they've decided that they're not coming back into the office until sometime after Christmas, with the exception when they need to physically view one of the products that they're shipping internationally. They happen to be a toy company. Um, 
things like that. I, when I was with IBM, I couldn't even convince companies to use chat apps because they're like, well, no, somebody can get up and walk to the other building and whatnot. <laughs> I think people were learning a whole new thing about um, remote working and how it is real work. Sometimes people think, oh, you're working from home, you're not really working. Well, no, you really are working. You're just working in a different setting. And in some respects, I have less interruptions here, um, people just coming over and talking or whatever. But to be honest, I, it's a little lonely working by myself in an office here. Um, and video conferencing like this helps. I was doing video conferencing back when it wasn't necessarily um, disease induced or uh, epidemic induced. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I would do virtual conferencing with customers with um, the technology that existed at the time simply share um, to put off travel and the costs associated with that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot for that. And as a whole, our country is much better geared for this than it has been at any time. We do have Amazon to get supplies around. We do have UPS, FedEx, DHL, the United States Postal Service, all these great ways of getting things reliably from one place to another. And we have a very robust internet to get digital information and more of what we have can be digitally shared. You don't send somebody a document in a physical form, you send them a PDF. Um, for the part I'm making, when I get the design done, I am just gonna digitally send the part and somebody's gonna print it with a 3D printer in the office. Oh, so, wow. Unless there's a need to share something physical, um, so much more can be done digitally, which makes the whole virtual world approach much more viable. Um, but what you have to do is you have to have people that think in terms of that. Some managers do what we call management by walking around, which they have to go and see what their employees are doing. You, you, know, you got to sit in this cube because that's closer to my office and I've gone <laughs> through that in my career. Um, and then you have other managers that are like, okay, I can see the work's getting done and you know, that's it. But communication becomes really important because if you're not seeing that person, you're not casually sharing information. So sometimes you have to be much more proactive about sharing information or just checking in. Uh, one of the people that I'm responsible for currently, I just send him a message saying, hey, how's it going? Light tone. He'll sometimes say, hey, do you know anything about this technology or that? And then um, we gripe at each other about things for a little bit and then uh, we're <laughs> on our ways. So, um, oh, wow. Tons of great information that you just shared with us. So let me just recap a couple of things. Number one, you're saying that there were people before COVID that uh, could have already gone virtual, but for whatever reason, we're choosing not to. And if they're like me, it was um, a lot because, you know, I'm not a techie kind of person and any, any kind of new tech I had to learn, I really didn't want to if I didn't have to. Second, if they like managing by walking around, if they're walking around at their own house and none of their employees are there, that's not a really good way to manage. <laughs> so do you have any suggestions and tips for people who do have virtual teams on how to better manage? Sure. Um, so again, having some sort of regular contact, you might have office meetings anyway, a particular team that I'm on uh, has two meetings a week that are just to go over to the status of projects. Um, before I would do things like hold a weekly team meeting just to kind of keep people chatting a little bit, what's new, what's interesting, but also a lot of it was instant messaging or using um, kind of the equivalent of the tools that we're using now, just to kind of keep in touch uh, at a social level. But project management is a whole nother area and how you measure milestones and, and whatnot. But communication is really that important thing. And so one of the things is in my field, a lot of people have their stuff on their computer. And if it's on their computer, nobody can see it. But if you have it stored in a common place, I can come in and take a look at what you're doing and the progress you're making. And uh, also say, hey, are you having some kind of problem with this or something? Um, so those I think are important things. And I've once again, lost my train. <laughs> no, that's okay. So I have a question for you. And sure. then if you remember what you wanted to say, um, yep. cause lots of great info again. So this common place that you're talking mm -hmm. about for people to put things, um, do you, because you come at this from a totally different uh, point of view, 
um, with your background, your IT background, your, you know, being an employee, you've been in this virtual space for a lot longer than most people have been, even before there were, were really good tools to do so. Mm -hmm. So do you have any recommendations on the best tools to use now for people with virtual teams? So that, for example, they can share those documents rather than just having it on right. their computer or any other tools that you recommend, like you mentioned project management tools. Yeah, so um, one of the things that people are probably most familiar with is Google Docs. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is the idea that if we all have our documents up there, then we can all get a, a sense of it. So say, for instance, we were working on uh, a website for a client or we were working on a new graphic promotion and advertising or something. If we have the different ideas and the storyboards and whatnot in Google Docs, people can look at those and reference them. And if I update one of those, you might get a notification depending on how things are set up. The changes have been made. So you can see this stuff. You don't have to have somebody come into your office and put something down on your desk, or it used to be come in with their laptop and show you a PowerPoint or, or something like this. So that shares it. Um, if you have more consistent information you're trying to share, the wiki format, like Wikipedia, but you can set up your own wikis that have information like, okay, if I need to take a vacation day, here's what I have to do to sign up for a vacation day. Or if I need to order a piece of equipment, this is the approval process I go through and whatnot. And by having all those documents online and easy to find, that's important, um, we, uh, you've got that common area. So there has to be a place to put things. And there's a lot of things for that. Dropbox is one of them. Google Docs is another one. Uh, OneDrive from Microsoft is another one. Um, then you've got the ones that introduce some kind of organization. So like SharePoint from Microsoft. Um, another tool people use is something called Slack. Slack and Microsoft Teams are ways of having that instant messaging and instant notification, but also including the document part of it. I think that's a good communication tool, but you still need what we call in the business a repository, what some people would call a library or even just a website, a static information that you need to know. Uh, what days are paydays? Uh, you know, um, when are the holidays coming up? Or, you know, this office event is happening, everybody needs to know about. So, there's a combination of things. And IBM, at the time I was there, it was called W3. And um, it had everything you needed to have, except that you couldn't find any of it. They had far and away the worst search mechanism at the time. Oh, no. I even brought it up at a corporate event, which got rousing cheers and <laughs> some off the record feedback that it was not appreciated that I had pointed that out. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a real problem. now. You know, Google has made such strides and, and all these products have made so much strides, but too often, and this is a real problem in a virtual environment, too often a business's knowledge, whether it's a new business or an old business, is stuck up here. And that's yes. only shareable by us being together on something like this. And it's subject to the faulty memories that I've exhibited so far. <laughs> so it's really important to commit ideas to a shared place where people can access them, can share them. Yeah. You know, uh, and, setting this up, you used a scheduling app to schedule up the time. If yeah. we had just done that back and forth by emails, it could have been lost. The scheduling app was a better choice. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, going back and forth via emails on that is a nightmare. <laughs> Um, do you, one of the tool that we use periodically, if there's a lot of people that we want to get scheduled is Doodle. Have you ever used Doodle? Doodle? No, I have not. Yeah. It's, I'm it's, usually it's not scheduling big groups. Okay. Well, it's a free one you can use to schedule multiple groups. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, so that's a lot of great information. Thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, you mentioned Slack. Mm -hmm. Do you like Slack? Do you use Slack yourself? I like Slack. I have clients that use Slack. It so happens the one consulting company I'm doing a lot of work for um, is very Microsoft centric, which is fine. So we use Teams and uh, Microsoft Teams has the uh, nice advantage of being able to do audio if you wanted to on the fly. And I've done that before with people or share screens and whatnot. And that way it's tied up with the chat application and you've got I find chat applications good because you can sometimes go back through that chat scroll and use that as a way of storing information. But again, yes. the problem is I can see that in there, it's better to keep it someplace else. So personally, I use Microsoft's OneNote to collect information. 
um, I and I can sync that across multiple machines and, and oh, whatnot. That's good. And uh, I do that. So I have information here. And when I would travel to the office an hour and a half away a lot, I need information and that way it would be easily shared. And I keep things in there that are relevant to projects. So if a customer goes quiet for six months because they're doing something else and comes back and said, great, we want you to pick that up. We've got a new budget, do this. I can go back there, quickly pull up the notes that tell me how I access their system and what information I have. And we keep passwords securely elsewhere, but you know, just general information that I need. So I can go, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, I remember this project because a lot going on. And if you're a virtual assistant, you probably split across a bunch of things so keeping notes is important it, it can't all be post-it notes of which i have a lot too <laughs> um i i used to have so many post-it notes it was um like a decoration on my wall now i don't do that i have everything on my computer so i i don't lose as much anymore i still every once in a while lose stuff but having the search feature really helps a lot yes so um do you use or have you used anything like um, Asana or Trello or any of those as project management tools that you can connect uh, with Slack? No, we use something called Jira from Atlassian. Okay. Um, and that's a ticket based and we use an agile methodology. Um, in the past, I've used tools like Microsoft Project to do um, straight uh, critical path analysis and for charts and the whole nine yards. I've been a lot more involved in the um, design of the project plan and then at IBM they specifically had a role for the project manager not being also the technical lead so that they managed all the contractual and whatnot things. So um, this job I'm doing a little bit more wearing multiple hats and so I'm doing more of the project management. Um, but you really do need to manage a product and not project and not just oh, did I, did I, did I, did I. Mm -hmm. Cause that's how you get wonderful overruns and incomplete projects. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Well, you are obviously really on top of the IT world and what's happening. And I mean, I got to tell you how impressed I am when I knocked on your door today and you had that 3d printer running and I love that you've got it running right now. So I have a question for you, which is, I want you to give me your prediction on what you think is going to happen uh, going forward with virtual work. Are we going to go back to the way things were? Are we going to go stay the way things are? Is there going to be some hybrid? Is it, what, what's going to happen? I just uh, love your prediction. I, I will preface this by saying I have developed an astonishing ability to be wrong about the prediction <laughs> of the future. That's okay. Um, <laughs> I can understand how we got where we got. I just, my predictions based on that, you know, I remember being in college in 1984, um, and Apple had a design contest, and like, what's the computer of the future going to be? And everybody wanted to put in voice recognition. And I worked with voice recognition at the time, and I'm like, nah, that's not going to happen. We're getting closer to that now. Realistically, it, it didn't happen then. I also thought there was no way we could get full motion video off of a CD, and we all have DVDs and we've actually gone beyond that. That beeping just means it's done. Um, okay. So all that being said, I, I predict a hybrid and primarily for two reasons. There, there certainly are jobs that you still have to be at a given place to do. And a lot of those jobs is because whatever you interact with is at that place. So you're in retail, you have to be where the customers are. Uh, you're in manufacturing, that machine is bigger than you are. It, it, you know, you have to be where it is. A lot of jobs don't involve being at a particular place. The office is there to have a convenient place to congregate, if you will. But even before a lot of people were going to these open space ideas that you just came in and you sat down at any desk, it wasn't your desk per se and, and whatnot. Um, so I would guess that the uh, retail office space um, industry is going to take a hit out of it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just knocked over my, <laughs> you knew this was going to happen. Um, Dan, Dan was like, people watch for that mic. I knocked it over. Sorry. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> we um, have that some excitement here. So, so yeah, I hear that. I hear what you're saying. There are some businesses that really do. You have to go there. 
right. there have to be employees that are there, but the ones that don't have to be. Well, and then you're going to get a certain amount of management that's going to say, well, we've always done it this way. And uh, I, you know, we've, we've got a 10 year lease on this building. We're going to use it blankety blank. Um, at my graduation from university, from college, um, the speaker was a person by the name of Grace Murray Hopper, who is very famous, uh, not only because she was the highest ranking woman in the military at the time, and oldest when she retired as a rear admiral, wow. um, but she was responsible for a lot of what computer science is today. In fact, she is the one who is credited with coining the term a bug in a program because she literally pulled a dead moth out of one of the earliest generation oh computers. And, and I love that story. I didn't know that. Yes. Uh, well, she's a very fascinating woman and responsible for the primary business computing language for the first several decades of computers called COBOL. In fact, her nickname was Grandma COBOL. But anyway, um, she started off our college graduation speech by saying, uh, I promise you here and now, if any of you say, but we've always done it that way, I will come and haunt you for 24 hours. <laughs> She's famous for having a clock that ran counterclockwise, even though it oh, took wow. time. That's it. And, and iconoclasts are generally not found in the military, and she was. Um, but that stick in the mud, we've always done it this way, has been a real problem. And sometimes change comes out of events like this where things have to change or something changes it. The music industry got radically changed when the MP3 format became available and the record industry wasn't ready for it. And the film industry wasn't ready for digital photography taking off the way it is. And Kodak, a monolithic company, a monster of a company, it's just basically all but gone now um, because the film industry disappeared and they weren't ready to go to the next step. Mm -hmm. um, so I think those companies that are going to drag their employees into a location, especially when the economy catches back up with itself, if we get back to the kind of record unemployment we had at one point, the easy differentiation is going to be, okay, um, you want me to come, I'll use my niece as an example, you want me to come to a job in Buckhead, which is the big area, um, but that's an hour drive in traffic, whereas this employer says I can stay home and work from home. Nah, sorry, you lose. Yeah. Uh, so I think that that is going to occur. But what I think is missing is people like yourself that are training people how to do this, because it's not uh, an empty skill set. It's not like oh, well, you working from home is the same as working in the office. It's not. No, um, it's not. For good and for bad, and people have to have some infrastructure, and have to have a good camera and, and a microphone. My brother who now formerly worked out in a lot of locations, but now is doing much more from home. He had a laptop that frankly, the gerbils just couldn't keep up anymore. It's like, <laughs> Dan, I, I can't do these video conferences. I keep cutting out, everybody's complaining. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's not a virus. You've just got an old computer. He got a new computer, he got a new webcam, he's now he got, I'm like, okay, now you're getting shine on you, your lighting is bad. Okay, yeah, I got to get that set up, you know, and I, I don't say we're all going to have ring lights, but um, we're going to start to learn what the difference is of this. A lot of people have ring lights. You know, yes. you just came in my, you just came in my video studio here and you're like, oh, you have a nice ring light. <laughs> Yes, you have. Well, that's because I also, um, I have a friend in Thailand and uh, we were doing a lot of video conferencing and her lighting was not optimal. I said, you need a ring light. So, yeah, yeah. And, and I actually part. just bought one for my home too, um, a smaller one. And just so you know, um, I, I normally use like Dell has been my computer of favor for a long time. I don't change computers very often because as I said, I'm kind of uh, phobic about technology. I am using right here a Microsoft service surface and I really love it. Super easy to use. Great. Yeah. Um, it's quite easy, a lot easier than most laptops I've ever used. And of course it also becomes um, a pad, which I just love it. I think it's awesome. Um, so we're doing like this, this could be made into a Microsoft commercial. I, it's funny, uh, when I was with IBM for the first, oh, I don't know, six, seven years at least, I was in the Microsoft technology group within IBM. And you want to talk about being the redheaded stepchild. Um, <laughs> but I got to really work with a lot of really interesting stuff uh, in that. And I, 
I started out in punch cards, if people remember what those are. So I've hit pretty oh, yeah. much every technology in the history of computing and actually some stuff that predates punch cards um, or computers as we know it. Um, so I, I'm very agnostic towards everything. Hey, if it works, these are tools, just like a carpenter or a plumber, like you said, these are the tools of my trade and I use them. Uh, on my desk, you can't see it because they're out of view. I also have um, tablets and phones because I do mobile work for customers, developing mobile apps. I have a laptop, you can just see the corner of over here that um, not only do I use for testing, but I play games on. Cool. And not, you have a chair. You have a chair that looks like it's out of a sports car. It's awesome. Yes. Um, actually, there's a reason for it. This is what's called a gaming chair. Oh. And um, I had what would be considered a normal office chair. And uh, after the second one broke, I'm like, this isn't working. Uh, so there's two advantages to this. One is it gives me full support all the way up to my head. And yeah, that's it has nice. a nice neck pillow here. Oh, and wow. this is not good. You got to think about uh, your work environment, but this also fully reclines down to a 180. Wow. Um, the only problem I found is that the average gamer apparently doesn't weigh quite as much as I do. So <laughs> seat padding was insufficient. So I bought a seat pad. But other than that, it's held up very, very well. And That's I find fabulous. it better. And part of this was because another worker friend of mine, colleague of mine, um, had gotten one for a birthday with Spider-Man because he's a big Spider-Man fan. And uh, I thought, you know, that makes a lot more sense in the chairs that I've been in. So for that virtual environment, since you will spend a lot of time in front of the computer, have a good chair, mm -hmm. um, but also have good lighting. Um, don't just rely on your screen. And also because if you're doing conferences and whatnot, and what you can't see is off here, I've actually got a very high powered LED light to give me some nice light. And what color light you have is how attentive you are. And, and get out and get some sunshine, too, because if we're inside all the time, we're not getting darn needed <laughs> vitamin D. Right. And do you have blue blockers and, in your glasses? No. Um, my nature is I lose glasses fast. <laughs> so I have an entire basket off screen here of <laughs> Dollar Tree glasses. I hear you. Yeah. losing them. No, I don't have a problem with that. And part of my doing is a lot of people are affected by the blue uh, after hours. My yes. answer to that, my work-life balance as a virtual person is I have no technology at home, no computers, oh, uh, wow. cable, I don't have anything. Oh I go gosh. home and I become not any technology, but separated from technology, if you will. Yeah. Uh, so the 3D printer is here as, a, as opposed to being at home. Um, I do crafts and stuff like that at home. Um, oh, that's fabulous. Cat. Yeah. It's just that for me is the thing. It's a lot of people in my industry are like, wow, did you, you know, see this cool new technology? I just redid this and I've got a computer room right. in my house. And I'm like, I do that all day long. Right. I, there is more of me than that. And that's the thing about the virtual assistant. At the time, again, with IBM, we called it the new normal. The idea that you might have a call at 3 a.m. because your client was on the other side of the world. And the counterpoint to the new normal is, Yes, you, you need to be responsive at different times. I have morning clients and I have evening clients. I prefer evening clients because I'm not a morning person. But um, you've got to have a separation between work and non-work. And if you're just purely virtual, you find it creeping into every minute of your day. Some people find it creeping in via their phone, some find it via their computer and whatnot. So I recommend as a virtual person, to have that work life. And that's again, why I like driving into this location because I come in, I'm at work. I leave, I'm not at work. Yeah. And uh, for me, that's important. Good recommendations. I love all of those. Thank you for sharing those. So um, because the podcast is called Dare to Leap, I would love your suggestions for anybody that is thinking about um, either it can be somebody who is a a manager and is thinking about, or a business owner thinking about allowing his um, employees or independent contractors to remain virtual, or someone who's thinking about um, going virtual themselves, um, and they're they're a little hesitant. They're like you were saying, um, yeah, but that's not how we've already always done it. 
So what would be your suggestion on how to help them to dare to leap into this new environment? If you're a manager, um, the most important thing I would say is know and be clear about your metrics. If you have an expectation that a, a worker is going to do X, then clearly make it, make it very clear to them you expect them to complete X and have a way of measuring that they completed X. Sometimes uh, a problem with the management by walking around, you walk around and the person looks really, really busy. You, you see that comically in many movies. The manager looks out the office door, everybody's, yes. and then the door shuts and everybody turns on TV sets and goofs right. off. Right. Uh, and if the manager doesn't have a way of knowing we've actually achieved this, then that's, that's really important. For a person looking to go virtual that hasn't gone virtual before, again, the metric helps you know, some people say, I work to a deadline, so know what your deadline is. But the other thing is to understand that a certain amount of self-discipline comes with that. Whereas you sitting in front of your screen watching a YouTube video of whatever, um, and there's so much on there, um, in the middle of the day in an office where somebody's gonna walk by and see you watching that video might keep you from doing that. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if you're like, I am just not getting anything done, you know, if I just could put my head down for five minutes, some people would retreat to the restroom or something like that. Now you can say, all right, I'll put my head down for 15 minutes or an hour, and then I will extend out my day. Right. Uh, one of the ways people have these metrics is they say, we expect you to be online by this time and expect you to be online at least until this time so that we know we can get a hold of you. But more developed ones might say, if I need you, I'll text you, um, and then have a reasonable expectation of how fast you're going to respond. Yeah, I um, like that. Companies got to really consider that right now it's a safety issue to have people in one location. Um, it's also an infrastructure issue. If you're not having to pay for an office, you know, maybe that saves you money, especially in a startup situation. Oh, yeah. You know, maybe that allows you instead to grow your operation because you could say, well, I'd hire more people because there's business out there, we'll say in mortgage refinancing, just as an example. Mm -hmm. But I've run out of desks. I can't fit any more people in here. Well, you go virtual, you can fit more people and you don't have to get a bigger office. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I love that. So, Dan, in wrapping up, mm -hmm. is there anything that I haven't thought to ask you that you want to be sure to share? No, you've been really wonderful. I, I would also say that one of the nice things about the virtual assistant idea is that, and this fits in with the whole gig economy, if you've got an idea to start something new, um, as a matter of fact, I'm in the process of doing that with something to do with injection molding, with making pieces, which I've got nothing fun to show you, but that's part of the reason I'm 3D printing. Um, with the virtual, you can say, okay, I need a person that does this, but I can't go full time, but maybe I can hire them for this many hours. And we can do this. Or the person I really need is in Florida or the person I really need is in Hawaii. Um, but they can do it virtually because they can send it to me electronically. You have an opportunity to build something here that perhaps didn't really exist before because that was not how people were thinking. And now they are. Yeah. So I don't know what that injection thing is you talked about. What is that? Oh, injection molding. <laughs> um, okay. Whenever you uh, buy something, I'm trying to find a nice example here. Well, I guess I'll, I mean, that's bad. Um, they're everywhere and everywhere. Uh, so a lot of the plastic things we have from plastic drink cups to parts of the chair that I'm sitting in to... Uh -huh to whatever, the way they do it is they actually have a mold that's the shape of whatever the piece is. Yes. And then they force hot plastic into that. So like oh. plastic knife forks and spoons are done by this method. Okay. The case of your, uh, around your monitor is done that way. If you um, buy a fan, the plastic on that, it's all done the same way. It forces this plastic in because it's forced in hot, it cools very quickly and they pop it out and they make the next one. Well. The machines are necessary involved in that. Um, a lot of this is made overseas because of the labor costs and, and whatnot. But a lot of people don't know how to go from, I've got an idea for, a, and this is not a great piece, but just a, a widget. Uh -huh. um, but I made 
10,000 of these or any 1,000 of these because I can mm -hmm. sell them. Mm -hmm. um, how do I do that? And mm -hmm. so we're looking to consult and help people do that. And oh, awesome. Awesome. So. Well, um, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, mm -hmm. Now, you're, feel free to say, yeah, I don't want anybody getting hold of me. No. <laughs> but if somebody was like, oh, this guy is so interesting. I would love to talk to him about injection molding or 3D printing or IT work or sure. anything else. What's the best way for them to get a hold of you? My email would be the best way of doing that. Okay. And you want to share that now or I can have it as a link on our show notes? Uh, it's probably easier if you have it as link in the notes okay. because it's one of those long ones and oh, yeah. you, know, you try to go it from <laughs> what the guy is saying and, and you repeat it and it's just easier if it's yeah. there and you can cut yeah. and paste it. Okay. I'll have it on there. And I don't know if, uh, the time comes that you have a website that you want to share with people for anything that you're, um, sharing or sure. anything like that. Uh, I'll share that in the show notes too. Just sure. Let me know what that is and I will do that. And we will have that on the show notes. Dan, thank you so much for being on here with me today. I really appreciate it. You have tons of knowledge and experience and I appreciate your willingness to share it with our listeners. I'm very happy. I, I think this is the way the world is going. Um, just how quickly we will get there remains a mystery to me. Well, it involves I, people and people make interesting choices. I will tell you that I happen to agree with your uh, idea of what we're going to be doing in the future. That's exactly where I think we're headed to. And I'm quite excited about it myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I, I've, I always love the idea of people getting to choose what they prefer. Yep. And if they prefer to work in an office all the time, great. If they prefer to work virtually all the time, great. If they want to do a little bit of each, why not? And, mm -hmm. and I think that's where um, that employee satisfaction that you were talking about really is going to make that big difference going forward. So I'm in total agreement with you. And I think it's going to be good for business because it's going to give them an opportunity to get better people that aren't necessarily geographically located where they are. Oh, yeah. Totally agree with you. Yes. Well, Dan, thank you so much. I have a joy and a pleasure to be part of this. <laughs> thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.